Hi, blockchain and cryptography enthusiasts. Welcome to ZK Marek, where I explain all things crypto. Before we dive in, we want to thank the Ethereum Ecosystem Support Program and VLayer for their invaluable support in making this video. Today, we will explore Merkle Patricia Trice, the cornerstone of Ethereum data structure. Ethereum stores big amounts of data, with millions of accounts and billions of transactions to date. Full node that stores the whole state, which includes all account balances, together with all historical transactions and receipts, takes more than 15 terabytes of disk space. And this number will always keep growing. Which begs a question, how can a computer that doesn't store the whole blockchain be convinced that a certain transaction was successfully mined? What we need is to efficiently prove that overall balances are included in a block. This is where Merkle trees come in handy. We'll take a look at how we can present the account balances in a tree structure for a simple eight-element vector. First, leaf nodes store values and their hashes. Then, each non-leaf node contains a hash of its two children's hashes. This creates a tree of hashes, leading to a single root hash. The root hash acts like a seal of authenticity for the entire dataset. Changing any element of a tree will result in changing every single hash on the path to the root, and eventually creating a completely different root hash. To prove that an item belongs to a tree, we need to recreate a path of hashes from the leaf to the root. We can do it using only sibling hashes, which make up the Merkle proof. Let's see why this works. By hashing the first sibling hash with the leaf node and continuing up the tree, we eventually reach the root hash, verifying the proof. Let's take a look at a function from the Open Zeppelin library for verifying a Merkle proof in Solidity. It verifies that a given leaf belongs to a specific Merkle root using a provided proof. The function starts by initializing computed hash with the leaf value. Then it iterates over each node in the proof, hashing it together with computed hash. Finally, we check if the computed hash matches the root. The code is so simple thanks to one clever trick. Specific implementation of hash function, so that the order of hashing doesn't matter. The function ensures that the smaller hash is always placed first while hashing together two nodes. Otherwise, we would need to store additional information, whether the node is a left or a right child of a parent. For Ethereum, we have more than 300 million addresses to store in a state. Each of them is of the length of 40 hexadecimal characters, so-called nibbles, which equals 20 bytes. For efficient lookups within such addresses, Merkle trees are combined with another type of tree structure, Patricia tries. In a Patricia try, each leaf represents two pieces of data, the key and the value. Let's see how it works. Patricia tries take advantage of common prefixes to reduce the tree size and enable efficient lookups. Now the nodes are indexed along the path of the try with key suffixes. And the leaf node stores the final suffix and value. One of Patricia tries used in Ethereum is the state try, which stores account address as a key, and account balance as one of the values. However, a binary Patricia try will need 160 levels of depth to store all of the Ethereum addresses, which is a lot. Can we try something else? Let's take a look at a hexary try, where each node branches into 16 possible children from 0 to F. Now to store all of the addresses, we would need 40 levels. While it's already a nice optimization, it's still a huge depth and a significant computational overhead when proving that an item belongs to the set. That's why Ethereum implements its specific, more efficient, Merkle Patricia tries. How exactly? Let's look at an example of four simplified addresses of seven nibbles. And their balances, it is a simplified state try. Single key value pair could be stored in a single node. To store two pairs, we leverage shared prefixes in the keys. All of the keys share an A7 key prefix. We put it in the so-called extension node. The next node branches out into 16 children from 0 to F, each representing a possible hex digit in the key. Such a structure lets us store the first two accounts and balances in leaf nodes. 
The other two items have a longer common prefix. 7, D3. So after the branch node, we add another extension node, D3. Now we are just one branch node away from storing the last two accounts and balances in the leaf nodes. So to wrap it up, Ethereum's Merkle Patricia Tri is built with three types of nodes, extensions, branches, and leaves. Moreover, each node in a Merkle Patricia Tri is indexed by the hash of its contents. This way we can prove that the leaf belongs to the tri by recreating its path from the root. Ethereum actually maintains four separate Merkle Patricia tries, among other variables in a block, each serving different role. The state try, which we explored earlier, is indexed by an address, and stores not only the balance and nonce, but also for smart contracts, the code hash, and storage root, which tracks smart contract storage variables. And there are three more tries, responsible for storing transactions, transaction receipts, and proofs of state withdrawals. Each of these tries store key value pairs, just applied to different types of data. And now, let's talk about proof sizes. Proof size of Ethereum Merkle Patricia try depends on try depth. On average, state tries have nine levels. So approximately our proof size is equal to try depth, multiplied by up to 16 nibbles per branch node, which is by far the most frequently used node, and constant size of kcheck hash function of 32 bytes. As an example, for nine levels of depth, proof of single account balance weights around four kilobytes. And what if we wanted to prove multiple values? Proving 1000 account balances leads to up to almost four megabytes of data, which is a lot for on-chain standards. Is there a way to make the proof smaller? We need to reorganize Merkle trees into the Merkle trees. And in the next episode, we'll finally break it down for you. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching ZK Marek channel.